we get so pigeonholed into one thing, like I, I want it right here in my neighborhood, but real impact growth and scale doesn't happen in your neighborhood. It happens all over the world. We're a global economy. And so the ecosystem that we need to participate in has to have that global component. Welcome to Be Bold Branding, where we discuss the power of differentiating yourself through your own unique story and standout personal brand. How do you grow from a seed of an idea to own your own TV network? Well, today's guest is Zandra Evans, otherwise known as the founder of Zandra TV. She has 40 plus years of corporate experiences and, and is a talk show host and executive producer of Real Biz Talk with Zandra and Fireside Chat with Zandra. She grew her business into her own powerhouse network in just a few short years, and now she's hosting and helping other small business owners and brands get exposure to a mass audience. Today, she's going to share her story and what inspired her to grow her own empire. Zandra, welcome to Be Bold Branding. I am so glad to be here. Thank you for having me. Yes, we're very excited about this to applaud your success and learn something from it. And we always start, you know, when we have our guests on a little bit about, you know, where did you come from? Like what made you decide that this was a thing to do to start a TV network and like what got us to this point, Sandra? And nobody uh, wakes up every day and go, I want to own a TV network. I mean, I really, I didn't wake up saying this. But a little bit of my history is I'm a 40-year corporate vet. You know, nobody stays at a company 40 years anymore, but I stayed at one company 25. And then my second company, I stayed there 15 years, and that made up my 40 years. I had never been laid off from a job. I got laid off. I had a great exit strategy because I think everybody needs an exit strategy. So I had a good exit strategy. And so I blew the dust off of it and started implementing, but it was not to be on TV. I'm a certified coach and I'm also a motivational, inspirational speaker. I love having a mic in my hand and I wanted to sell a couple of best-selling books and I did that as well. But I guess, you know, a change of guard happened when I decided to hire me a PR agent and the PR agent was not to be on TV. It was to book me on bigger stages. But she started booking me on TV and radio and they fell in love with me. And then that's where the journey began. That's a great backstory. Now, I do have a problem here that I'm having a hard time with the math because there's no way you spent 40 years consecutively doing anything. You had to have started <laughs> when you were like three. Like, <laughs> exactly. You know what I mean? What? What? I'm you sure know, those you know could hear mean? something. You know, what I usually say is back then they were hiring people when they were nine. Uh, I will fool that 49 mark, but that would not be the truth. Uh, oh, 40 years and they hired me when I was nine. Let, let the record be stated. Let it yeah, be stated. Yeah. The numbers have been put forth. <laughs> no, I like that a lot because and I'm sure we're going to dig a little deeper into it. Obviously, you know a lot about building brands and built your own brand in, to this point. And that's what the show's about and the success that comes from things like that. But yeah, that's pretty fascinating because I guess, you know, you were ready. My granddad always said luck is when preparedness meets opportunity. And you were prepared. And even though you didn't imagine it, you did imagine something, right? And then you were open to the new challenge and took I off. Know I, I, you know what? I'm going to be honest with you. I don't know that I, oh, it, you know, like it, uh, the opportunity met itself. I would love to think that that really was what it was. But I have to be fully transparent. We all talk about a vision board, right? And I've always been under the understanding of a vision board that I never wanted one that just had, you know, sandy beaches and nice umbrella drapes, because what value is that really adding to the world? So for me, my vision board is always tangible things like I'd love, you know, to do X or Y. And so I had this one thing left to do on my vision board, which was fireside chat with Zandra. Now, it wasn't so much to be on TV. But what I wanted to do is I want to bring my girlfriends together and I would love to talk about current, you know, worldly things. Like my first show was how to date in the new millennium, right? Let me bring a certain say, well, girlfriends, let's talk about that. <laughs> so that's really what I wanted to do. And I, at the time, seven years ago, it was really to put it on YouTube, but I heard a little voice that said, film it professionally. And mm -hmm. so that's kind of how this thing started. And then 
somebody in Chicago told somebody in Atlanta about me in Dallas and said I would make a great talk show host. And I had never been a talk show host in my life. And so they called me up and I was like, they're tripping. What? I've never done that before. <laughs> but I, I'm a woman of faith, so I prayed about it. And I got to go ahead by the channel, Sandra. My first Roku channel seven years ago to really be a place to distribute my girlfriend talk. Yeah. Okay. It, it all starts like right where your heart is, right? And then you realize, or let's put it this way, in your case, it sounded like other people realized your potential to take that much further even before you did. Mm -hmm. I think so. Now, listen, there was some, if I look back over my life, right? And this is a long life, but you know, you look in the rearview mirror oftentimes when you get to a certain place. But when I look back over my life, I had the opportunity years and years ago to host the, I was the MC for a 12 week talent program in San Francisco. And so that was my, you know, first getting on the stage. Hey, how you doing? Getting people all excited, kind of what you do on a talk show, but it was just a live deal and, and you know, on stage. So I started to have, think about all of the times that I had the opportunity to do things like that. So I guess I kind of knew a little bit, but only enough to be dangerous. And I was like, I don't know what I'm doing. So it just came together. Yeah, but faith in action That's is right. applaudable. And you did that. You moved on it. Yeah. So I yeah. love it. That's so right. Okay, so I want you to answer this question for me. For a lot of people who, ha who probably have this question, right? Because the word TV doesn't mean today what it did back before podcasting became so popular, right? So how does your network compare or how does it differ from podcasting? Oh, wow. So this is such a great question because a lot of people say, oh, I was watching your podcast and I was like, mm -mm, not a podcast, <laughs> nothing wrong with a podcast. <laughs> it really isn't anything wrong with the podcast, but we are really a full studio, TV studio production firm. So the difference is, is that we literally have studio sets and people fly in to Dallas to be on TV in front of the lights, camera, and action. And we even do live shows as well where people are invited to come and participate as a live studio audience. So we're a real TV network. Our niche, though, is to really help small business entrepreneurs. I love that. Yeah, I do too. That's a great focus. It really is. And are you working out of any of Jeff Crilly's studios? I have, I have my own studio. Okay. Okay. I wasn't sure. I know. Yep. I know a lot of people who fly in down there and actually film at his studios for different purposes, but most of those people are podcasters, but they're beautiful, you know, sets and so forth. So awesome. You'll have to give us a virtual tour of your studio sometime. I would love to give you a virtual tour. His studios are beautiful and it's really great, but here's the thing. This is what I want to tell folks. I probably would not have, if I knew better, I know better now, but I didn't know better at the time. But what we did is we really built a full service production and distribution house. So you can produce content all day long, but where are you distributing it to? Mm -hmm. And it perfect. Think about an audio cast, which is what that is. It's an audio cast on the typical iTunes and so on and so forth. That's cool. But what about the video content? Some people learn by watching and we're missing a huge opportunity. So to me, it's not just saying you can have a beautiful studio, but if you have no massive distribution arm, you're missing out. Yeah. Yeah, I agree with that 100%. Totally yeah. agree. Totally and look, agree. And visuals, like, you know, the thing about podcasts, and I'm like you, we have podcasts, we're on a podcast right here. And I do, going down the road, I'll listen to podcasts, stuff like that. But I'm a visual person and I want to watch it. You know what I mean? I want to see it. So I like that. I think that you're right. Well, obviously you've proven that. And the distribution of that, I think, is more valuable. I mean, we know video, 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 video. It's never changed. And it's, it just continues to be more and more what every guru talks about. You're way ahead of that game. So, you know, that's awesome. I agree with it a thousand percent. You need yeah. that visual and you need that distribution. You do. Because when you really think about it, about 80% of the internet traffic is video. Mm -hmm. So if that be true then you got to play differentially in this space. And so mm -hmm. one of the things that we figured out early on is get in the video audio space. And what we do is we, we actually record on two tracks. We got our video track, you got an audio track. We take our audio tracks and then we create an audio cast or an audio podcast 
but we also have TV. So we're addressing people no matter what you like. If you just like podcasts, go listen to Drive Time Biz. If you want to see it on TV, go to TV and look at Roku, Amazon, and Apple. Yeah. Yeah. And that brings to light like your motto, which is be heard, be seen, and grow. Talk a little bit about that, where that came from, because you just alluded to that. I don't know where it just came. It started out with me talking about leveling the playing field. I felt that I had spent 40 years in corporate America, and if I was going to come out here into the public sector, that I wanted to make a mark, not for myself, but create my legacy for my, my family around being able to level the playing field for small business entrepreneurs. But when I really thought about what will level the playing field, and it was three things. It was like, if I can help you be seen on TV, you have a greater potential of growing. If I could help you be heard on TV and audio cast, you have a greater percentage of growing. And so all of it is around impact, scale, and growth. That's what I'm all about. And so that's where that came from. Because I want to level the playing field. I want you to grow. We're right in line together on that, Zondra, because that is the driving force of what Brand Face is. And I've been a serial entrepreneur all my life. I gave up a college education to be not an engineer, but to be an auctioneer. My mom cried, how am I going to eat? Where my paycheck going to come from? You know, we laugh about that now. But at the time, it wasn't something to laugh about. So I applaud that. It's the driving factor with us because small business and entrepreneurs are the driving force of America, period, period, period. It's the best way to pull people out of abject poverty. It's a way to give hope to people that you can do this. You can create something that is yours and watch it grow and work with people like Zandra that will help you get out there. And there's no limit to where you can go. Yeah, that's so true, Zondra. And I think, too, you know, we focus on like what we say is anybody can build a pretty brand. Right. But if it's not purposeful and if it's not profitable, it's not of much use to it's you. Hot. Right. And anybody can be seen and be heard in various different places. But if they can be seen and be heard in the right places, that growth they is astronomical. Mm -hmm. And that's where your distribution comes in, which is brilliant. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, and that's the other thing. So I tell you all a little story. Everything has a story. So when I first started seven years ago, I had millennial children, you know, go figure. I, you know, <laughs> We've got four of them. Yeah. All right. And they were telling me, oh, mommy, you have to get on social media. You got to get on this. You got to do this. And you got to go live. And you did. And I was like, <laughs> and I looked at them and I said, oh, y'all. I said, your mama's name is Zondra. I don't need, I don't need all that social media stuff. Well, I wasted six or seven months of my journey not believing I needed social media because my name was Zon. And then I decided that when I did, I had a following of about 85 when I started. But one of the things that I believe around brand, because this is about brand, is that when you pay for the growth, is that really solidifying your brand? And so I want it to be different. I decided I'm going to do organic growth. And so between all of my social platforms now, probably somewhere between 15, 16,000 between all of them, but I did it from 85 and I did it organically because why? My message is consistent. I'm persistent about what I'm talking about. And that really is critically important to building your brand. Couldn't have said it better. Absolutely. And organically, those followers are followers that are following Zandra. It's, you know, mm -hmm. we could go out here and pay, like you said, and get numbers look like numbers. What good are they? I'm in the real estate business. And I remember back when Facebook was, I was like, oh, got to have numbers, got to have numbers, got to have numbers. So I paid this company to get me a bunch of likes on my page, but they were all like in other countries. They weren't buying houses in Atlanta. <laughs> they did. What good were they to me? I, I appreciate them, but you know. I'm not going to sell a house to, you know, that's a other thing that's a good takeaway to your brand is you've built that kind of following of people that care about what you're doing. And uh, that's huge because you got to have the right people listening to your message, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. The best laid brands, obviously, are very streamlined. They're very focused. They work with a certain type of ideal customer. So who's the best fit for your network? Oh, you know, that's a really good question. Remember, I said I'm a small business advocate, and I am. But, you know, I always tell people you got to boil down your avatar. Now, come on now. You think small business represents 95% of right. is in the world. You know, anytime the SBA says you can have 499 employees and be classified as a small business, I got to be more succinct than that. Mm -hmm. So, for me, 
my sweet spot of where I love to work is for solopreneurs to 25 employees. Those companies, like a solopreneur just needs a little help to be heard, be seen, to start that growth engine, to start the growth engine. That's a startup. You don't have any employees. It's just you, but you're passionate about what you're doing. Nobody can tell your story better than you. So I want to create that for them. Then they're going to see that it's going to start to come together. But for someone that has 25 employees, they're just at the place where they need a commercial on TV. They mm -hmm. need to make sure that they're running something on Hulu by demographic that talks about their business. They're at that place that if I could provide the right amount of exposure, it could take them to the next level. So that's mm -hmm. it. That's that's my sweet spot. Oh, I love it. Yeah, she, I do too. See, that's a takeaway for the audience. She's got it dialed in. Like she knows who she's trying to speak to 90% of the time. And that's so important because you obviously know the language that speaks that. It speaks to me because that's where I'm at. And starting as a solo entrepreneur and then growing into, you know, probably 22, 23, count my agents and everything. So mm -hmm. it's really good. Now, let me ask you something. So in the way you do your distribution and stuff and on those platforms like Hulu, Roku, those kind of things, can you get hyper local with your advertising? And uh, if I like say I wanted to cover 22 of the metro Atlanta counties, you can do that for me that your firm and distribution can do that? <laughs> oh my God. Yes, yes, we can. So, so here's my thing, because I, I think that also we get so pigeonholed into one thing, like I, I want it right here in my neighborhood, but real impact, growth and scale doesn't happen in your neighborhood. It happens all over the world. We're a global economy. And so the ecosystem that we need to participate in has to have that global component. So the way we do it is we take Amazon, Roku, and Apple. We can make that global that it could go anywhere. But we take our Hulu component and we make it very, very targeted. So whatever demographic, whatever zip code, whatever region, you tell us we'll drop that same commercial that's running national and global on Amazon, Roku, and Apple, we'll drop it through Hulu. And so then now you get to be on Hulu for 30 days. I mean, yes. small business gets to be on Hulu. Right? Yeah, I love it. Exactly. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> and you may not know this, but I have a media background. I spent 18 years in the media world. So really, it's the difference between national and local sales, right? So your national is more global sales and it reaches a more global audience. And that is the platform itself, like the Amazon, the Roku, so forth. And then you've got the localized, which is each of those channels on those networks can dig down into the local and be more hyper local. So love that. And I I speak your language because actually before Brandface became Brandface, I had another company and I consulted television, radio, and newspaper on how to use the internet. So how to use the internet to their advantage and like link those two together. So what I was hearing, which is fascinating, and you have no doubt probably heard this, is I was hearing from television station owners and radio station owners, hey, the internet is taking all of our money. We're losing money to the internet. And I thought, you realize nobody owns the internet, right? <laughs> Not even Al Gore. So they say the World Wide Web. That's right. <laughs> exactly. Nobody owns that. You can claim a piece of real estate online at any moment and use your traditional media commercials to drive them from an offline experience to an online two-way communication. And so that's what it was all about. And so that's where you and I talk a lot of that same language. I love how you took that to the next level mm -hmm. of television, which is really who buys cable anymore, right? Not a lot of people, but I no. know a lot of people. There's three Roku sticks in our house right now. <laughs> <laughs> so right. so I, I know, I know it's, it's fascinating, but hats off to you, Sandra. You've done an incredible job. Thank you. It's, you know, it's been an interesting journey. It's been fun. But at the same time, it's been very challenging because I'm a baby boomer and I just happen to have a few millennial tendencies. And that is only because I got millennial children. So you have to think about me coming into this space almost seven years ago. I grew up on rabbit ears and I was the remote control. <laughs> you know, so I'm like, hey, well, what do we talk here? And when I first bought my first Roku channel, I didn't even know how, what, how do I watch it? I was like that. Like, yeah. oh, what do I do? Do I go online to the World Wide Web? No, I'm just saying, how do I watch this thing? 
And then I started to figure out, girl, go get you a box. You know, you ordered one time, $39 down, you know, go ahead and add your channel. And so that's how I got started. But I didn't know anything about this. But now I'm so like grateful, fortunate and humbled by the experience to be a woman that is truly a baby boomer that totally understands this landscape and how to change the trajectory of small business. Yes. Well, we're glad that you are Bravo. doing that and we'll support that 100%. It is definitely right in line with who we are too. And, and we want to encourage those entrepreneurs out there to constantly be striving for that next thing and to utilize the knowledge of people like Zandra Evans that can help you with that, right? What one piece of advice, because you've built a good brand, what's the one piece of advice that you would give the audience about personal branding? It's so good. Stop playing. Um, no, <laughs> I just like to have fun, y'all. Stop dying. You can an entrepreneur, you're not. I, you know, here's the one thing that I think, and really, this is the success for me. I'm going to tell you two things that I did. When I first started in this journey and I had hired a PR agent, the best in the world to me, her name is Angel Tussie, if y'all want to look her up. Anybody listening, she is amazing. But what we agreed to do is that every 10 days, we wrote an article and we put it on the wire, as we call it, a press release. And it was picked up by many. And I did that for every 10 days for 18 months. And so you've got to think about the money that I spent for that. But, you know, it was wonderful because she had a package that could help me. And so that was awesome. So you have to feed Google, but your storyline has to be consistent. You can't be out here one day talking about a restaurant. And then the next day you're talking about a cleaning service. Now, which one are you going to do? Be clear on that and stick with it and fill the pipeline with your message. Fill the pipeline with your thought process. Fill the pipeline with your face because your eyes are the window to your soul. So you need plenty of video, but I don't mean just video like this. I mean, Judy, <laughs> it's a professional video so that people can see you professionally and that you're reciting that same message. And you know what? It's going to be boring to you because you're going to be like, I done said this a hundred thousand times. Ain't nobody listening yet. You know, I do why streaming matters, why streaming matters, why streaming matters. I'm a I'm dark. <laughs> Stay sharp. <it. Okay>. But, <laughs> but the real thing is the algorithms are changing and people haven't heard. So I have been doing this for seven years straight. And what I do know is I grew a brand internationally because I decided to play differentially. Your brand matters. You are the brand, not the TV, not the this. You're the brand and the message that you give has to be consistent, but you've got to want to really have an impact, scale and grow, not just in your neighborhood, but globally. So true. Bravo. Fantastic. Bravo. Ditto. Fantastic. <laughs> yes. Yes. Uh, well, Zandra, I have a question for you that we ask all of our guests, and we do it just to kind of get a little flavor of your personality, even though you are not lacking any bit of flavor in your personality. All right. So if our listeners had the freedom to visit anywhere in the world, where would you recommend they visit and why? Oh, well, I don't, that's a loaded question. I, I want to get two locations, but I'll just give one. Okay. You know, I think Grand Cayman Islands is absolutely the most beautiful place that I've ever been to. I think that the water, the sand, the clarity, it's beautiful. And so I really do like Grand Cayman Islands. However, if you're just in the U.S. and you can't get to the Cayman Islands, I believe that Alabama has the most beautiful landscape. Their tertiary is just like so beautiful. Just take a drive through the countryside. It's absolutely gorgeous. I love those. Uh, I agree. I agree. Yes. And my best friend's from Alabama too, so he'll applaud you for saying that. Yeah, That's right. Yeah. <laughs> You've been there, it's pretty. It's just trees and it's so beautiful. It's really it really is. It yeah. really oh, is. Oh yeah. Well, Zondra, what is the best way for people to learn about you, contact you, and work with you? Well, you know, it's easy. Just go to be on ztv.com. That's B E O N Z T V dot com. And schedule time with me to see whether or not you fit to be on TV. I think everybody fits to be on TV, but there's free discovery calls on beyondztv.com. I look forward to talking to you soon. Oh, well, congratulations once again on this incredible network. Mm -hmm. And we know two people that are in your network and they can't say enough great things about it and you. And thank you for sharing your time with us, Sandra. Oh, thank you for having me. Blessings uh, to you both. Thank you. 
Brought to you by BrandFace, the only comprehensive personal brand building system across the globe.